Good morning, brothers and sisters. We thank God for this time of prayer where we can come before God with all our petitions, our concerns, our anxieties before him. And he says we cannot burden him. He holds the world in his hands and he has our cares in his mind. We read this morning a familiar text, uh, second book of Corinthians chapter 12, we are reading from verse 7. Second Corinthians chapter 12, we are reading from verse 7. And Paul says here, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. If we ever needed grace, God's grace, God's abiding presence with us is when we are praying for families. The challenges are there, many. And the thorn in the flesh can be a son, can be a daughter can be a spouse, a husband, or a wife. A thorn in the flesh can be a family member, a friend that is very close, that has left God. A thorn in the flesh can be in laws. A thorn in the flesh can be family finances. A thorn in the flesh can be sickness in the family. Whatever it is can be a thorn in the flesh. Having a thorn in the flesh is another thing. When you have a thorn in the flesh, something that makes you uncomfortable, something great that you bring before the Lord. But also having a, a, a messenger of Satan to buffet at you is another thing. When you are limping and you are crushed by circumstances of life and the devil sends his messenger, an angel to laugh at you, to mock you, to harass you, to put you down and declare that you are a prayer warrior, you are a servant of God. Why can't he heal you? Why can't he take care of your children? Why can't he take care of your needs as a family? And uh, he embarrasses you and harasses you, sends messages in your mind that uh, other people are coping, other people are doing well, even those who do not know God. Why me, Lord, this time? A messenger of the devil sent to you to harass you, to put you down, and messages are getting into your mind. Say, so why me, Lord? It's one thing to have a thorn in the flesh. Another thing, to have a messenger of the devil to harass your soul. Paul has a thorn in the flesh. He says, I pleaded with the Lord three times. I said, God, take this thing. And the first time, God did it. He prayed for the second time. Take this stone out of my flesh. It makes me uncomfortable. It hinders my work. I want to have comfort from this. And God said no the second time. He prayed for the, second, for the third time. And God said no. Don't even mention it again. And don't even pray about it. I have made up my mind that I will not remove the stone from your flesh. But I will multiply my grace to see what the devil and his messenger will laugh at. So that while in the midst of having the, flesh, the, the thorn in the flesh, I'll give you grace, I'll give you my presence, I'll give you power, I'll give you endurance, I'll give you stamina to carry on in the midst of a thorn in the flesh. So that people will see that my grace is sufficient. I make a difference, you are not alone. I remember that Jesus prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane. When the cup of suffering, rejection, and the cross was ahead of him, 
He says, I pleaded with the Lord. He pleaded, pleaded with the Father. He says, God, can we put another plan to save humanity without me going to the cross and die? I'm going to face rejection, suffering, crucifixion, and death, a cruel death on the cross. Can we come up with a plan of saving humanity without me dying on the cross? And he said, this cup pass, made pass from me. He has prayed for the first time, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God insistently pressed the cup closer to the lips of Jesus Christ for him to drink it. He prayed for the second time, oh God, my father, take the cup from me. God pressed the cup of suffering closer to the lips of Jesus Christ. He prayed for the, second, for the third time. God, take away this, the cup of suffering. And God's presence was with his son. He didn't change the cup. He let Jesus drink the cup of suffering, rejection and the crucifixion, the cup of death on the cross that he was going to be betrayed and die. So Jesus drank the cup. For Jesus is, was the cup. Sometimes all, uh, some of us will have a cup, uh, the cross to bear, or a thorn in the flesh like Paul. But God says, in all these circumstances, my abiding presence will be there. My grace is sufficient. Just as I was with this, my son, Jesus Christ, reconciling the world unto ourselves, God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, God says, I will be with you. I am there, just as I was with my son. For Paul, God says, for the thorn in the flesh, I am going to give you endurance. My grace is sufficient for thee, so that we see what the devil will laugh at when I am there. The most gift that God wants to give us as families, it is his abiding presence. He says, when I am there, I make a difference. My grace is sufficient. I am there with you. When you go through the storms of life, when you go through the waters, when you go through the fires, the flames of afflictions, I am there and my presence makes a difference. God says, sometimes I don't change circumstances to make you comfortable, to suit you. I change you from the inside so that you suit circumstances. Sometimes I don't pave the road. Sometimes I don't ease up and take out the thorns and the thistles and the, and the missiles of the enemy. I make you, give you shoes to walk on the same stony road. I don't let, I don't destroy the ammunition of the enemy. I make you fly above where the enemy can reach you as a family. I am there with you. I make a difference in your life. God says, my grace is sufficient. It is like uh, those uh, shock absorbers in our cars that we drive, in the bumpy roads of, uh, of life. God says, when you go down, you are not going to go down forever. I'm going to give you shock absorbers to lift you up in the bumpy roads of life like the shock absorbers. My grace is sufficient that as you go ups and downs of life, you have the, the cushion of God's grace like a shock absorber to lift you up and make you comfortable. I am there. Sometimes I don't change the bumpy roads and just smooth them out, but I give you shocks, endurance, stamina to pass there. God says, I am there. He wants to give us the gift of his presence and his presence makes a difference. And also as the, the disciples were in the storm uh, 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 and they were crossing from one end of Galilee to another end and they were battling with the storms and they were wondering if Jesus cares when we go through this. As he wakes up and asks them, where is your faith? I said, we are going over to the other side and we should have believed in me. Because his grace, his presence, by his literal presence to the disciples, they were still crying. God says to us that I am there. My presence will go with you. 
Even to Moses, he said the same thing. Even to Joshua, he said to the, to the same thing, that my presence will go with you. Without God's presence in our families, we'll fight with the storms of life, with the bambigos of life, with circumstances that are negative. But with Jesus, his grace is sufficient. God says, my grace is sufficient. This grace is like a a walking stick, a stick, a rod, a crutches like a, when somebody has gone through an accident and he has to sit on a wheelchair or use some crutches to stand on. God says, I am your wheelchair. When you are beaten by life, when you are crippled by life circumstances, you can rely on me, sit on me, and I will take you wherever. May I be your crutches that you can stand on and walk by me, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. My presence, my strength is there. When we have a thorn in the flesh, a cup to drink, a burden to bear, a cross to carry, I am there. I am there with you. Among the gifts that God will give, the primary one is his divine presence, his grace. So that when we have his presence, all other presence will come along. All other gifts will be there because God is there with us. God wants us to be, to remember that his presence is there. How I wish that during our daily activities, we'll let our minds talk and wander in the presence of God, where we talk to ourselves and, and, and say, his grace is sufficient for me. His abiding presence is all I need for these circumstances. May I hear his voice continually say, I am with you. My grace is sufficient. So that above the elements of Satan, above the noise, above, above the sounds and the messages that the devil sent, we hear the voice of God whispering to each one of us saying that I am with you, my grace is sufficient. We have a thorn of a son, we have a thorn of a daughter, we have a thorn of a spouse, we have a thorn of a relative, we have something, we have weaknesses, we have sicknesses, we have needs, financial needs. We have the needs of comfort during this time of, uh, uh, of sicknesses and death. God says, my grace is sufficient. When you go through the valleys of life, you are not forsaken and abandoned. I am there. My grace is sufficient for you. May it comfort you. May it sustain you. May it give you comfort in knowing that God is there. May we let the, 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 the text, may we let the message of God, may we hear the voice of God during our daily routines saying that I am with you. I, this storm is not here to take you of God. I am there. I saw the storm coming. I saw the pressure coming. I saw the needs coming, but I am with you. And my presence makes a difference. May we feel God's presence today. May God enlighten our burdens. May we see his face and his countenance shine before our presence. May we hear a voice behind me saying that this is the way. Turn this way. Turn that way. I am with you. As the tears come down our cheeks and our hearts are filled with sorrow and pain, may we know God's presence is there. As uh, he was with his son, as he was with, uh, with, with Paul in his circumstances, God is there. Even as Jesus cried uh, on, on, on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So that when humanity feels forsaken, we know that we are loved and God is with us in Christ Jesus. His grace is sufficient. May we feel his grace. May we remember his grace during the day. May we remember his voice to give us courage to give us assurance that he will give us stamina, courage to enjoy. And if he needs to give us shoes to walk on the stormy roads, he will do that. And give us winds.
to fly above where the missiles of the enemy will not even reach. God's grace may it be sufficient for each and every one of us and to our family members that we represent. May I as we pour our burdens before him, know that his grace is sufficient. His presence is all we need and other things will be taken care of because he is there. He's more than enough. He's more than our enemies. He's more than what we need. He's more than what we need. His grace is sufficient. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, we come before your presence this morning. A day where we pray for our families. We have sons and daughters that we are pleading for. Some are weak in the faith. Some have left the faith. We pray, Lord, that may you bring them. And as you work on them, you say you are working in us to give us strength and energy, endurance. You become our shock observers, observers so that, God, we can su su survive over circumstances of life. We pray, Lord, that you take care of our children, our spouses, our, our relatives, our in-laws, our finances. Take care of the sick, the bereaved. May we feel your presence, your grace being sufficient for each one of us. We pray, Lord, that as the devil sends messengers, as he sends his words, his silent messages, that who are we? Do we think God is there? Do we think God cares? May we know for sure that God cares. He was with Paul. He was with Jesus. He is still with us. We are praying, oh God, that may you take care of our cares. As we surrender ourselves to you, may your presence continue to abide. May we be reassured that you are there with our families and will take care of our, our needs and our concerns. Take care of our anxieties, our pain. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for being with us as we continue to pray and plead with you that you are there with us. Thanks for your abiding presence in our families, in our individual lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.